again. 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 Hello world, my name is Miguel Francis. I'm a film school graduate from Los Angeles, California. And I'm about to go to this little hot spot right here called Crimea. Now, it was a part of Ukraine, this little country's territory, up until about March 2014, when this huge piece of land called the Russian Federation decided to go in there with its military, occupy this territory, and then annex it from Ukraine. Now, we all know this really well according to our mainstream media, but alternative media out there seems to have this point of view that everything was done by the book and Crimeans themselves decided to vote for this referendum and join Russia. I'm taking this a bit personally because my great-grandmother is from Ukraine and for my first film project, and I definitely owe this to her, I decided to risk my life, go in there and find out the truth behind Crimea. In about the three minutes section here, watch what happens. Okay, people, so here we are on this piece of Sevastopol, and there's this huge line over here, and I'm, you know, I wonder what it's for. Hey, can you ask, what's this line about? The states are spreading. There's a lot of propaganda that there's killing here. They're just killing the people. Notice how many Russian passports. We're happy like fools. You know, it's just very interesting to actually see, to see someone, especially from America like ourselves, that are taking the time to try to show the truth about Crimea. What a lot of people do not realize is that Crimea, even back during the time of the Tsars, Tsar Alexander, uh, from the 1800s, even back in the 1700s, According to historians, Crimea literally was part of the Russian Empire. It's stated by Russia, by histori excuse me, by historical docu uh, do uh, documentaries, the Russian Empire during the time of Alexander the Great, for example, was from the Pacific Ocean all the way to Crimea. That's exactly the way it's worded. So it's kind of odd to us to find out that it's everybody thinks that Crimea belongs to Ukraine. In fact. Crimea was still a part of Russia even during the Soviet Union. It wasn't until 1954 that the Russian Federation themselves actually signed over the administrative delegation of Crimea to Ukraine. But then Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. They felt like they could trust them with the delegation of the activities that go on there. But it wasn't actually handed over as, this is our new empire, no. And even at the collapse of the Soviet Union, when Crimea actually becomes its own state, Russia continues to keep their military there with up to 20 to 25,000 personnel. So, as the story goes, most of these people are Crimean citizens. And this documentary done by this man right here, Crimea for Dummies, which we have posted on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page. Please go check it out. Or you can look it up, Crimea for Dummies, on YouTube. Watch it. It will definitely educate you from an American point of view, trying to get rid of the propaganda. But of course, as you guys know, it's one of the reasons why we want to deal with the biblical side as well of what's happening. I think we're seeing, are fixing to see very soon the pale horse rider of Revelation ride forth. But remember, the horse is a power. It's a military power. The rider of that pale horse happens to be death itself. But death is an agreement. An agreement. Very interesting. We're going to go into that. We're going to take a look at Daniel, the kings of the north and the king of the south. If you think about it, one sister sent me one time, you know, Brother Steve, that's actually like in the times of Israel. We had the northern kingdom, the house of Israel, and the southern kingdom, the house of Judah. Today, I do believe that house of Judah is the southern kingdom. I'll be able to prove that by Daniel's very prophecy. 
I'm going to show you where that comes from. But the king of the north is the Pope of Rome. He is an Edomite, an Edomian king. But he has very much given birth to the harlot daughters. Those harlot daughters in the United States, many of the denominational churches today, as well as the Islamic religion that he gave birth to, happens to be a very strong and powerful remnants of the house of Israel scattered abroad. One reason why they say that Palestinians today are also Jews, or Jewish descent. Sure they would be. There's no doubt about it. They may very well be Jewish descent. We'll get into a lot of this stuff tomorrow night I wanted to share with you, but I also wanted to show you some more interesting evidence here. Again, troop movement all over the place. This one right here, I forget for sure exactly if this was Russia moving more troops in Crimea, uh, to, the, to the northern border of Crimea, to, as we have stated over and over and over, to protect the Russian citizens of Crimea, or is it in fact uh, the Ukrainians? I do not remember for sure on that, but I do know that we do have a film. And this one here, this is definitely right here, this is Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine saying that they have to justify their own buildup because they're worried that Russia will invade, which is a bunch of nonsense. Russia is not going to invade, but Russia will protect their own people that are living in Crimea, a place that belongs to Russia. As one journalist said that I thought was very interesting, you know, giving Crimea back over to NATO would be like the United States giving Hawaii back to the Japanese. It really just does not make sense, guys. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. Let me share with you some other things here. This is right here on Twitter here. Um, and this one right here, I believe, you know, that's the Russian one there. That's Russian. Some of the same information there. But here we have here. Let me see if this is the one. <clears throat> no, that's the, I believe that's Russian as well. This may be it right here. This here is Ukraine. Again, a huge number of their own uh, troops, armored personnel, carriers, etc., loaded with people on these, uh, these things here, headed down towards uh, the border there with, um, they, don't show, they don't like show very long clips of them. I guess I don't want anybody to know what they're doing, but anyway, they're headed down there to the border of Crimea as well to confront Russia. There have been skirmishes. We have been Seeing this over and over and over, it has been reported on the Ukraine's president website, as they call it, that there has been gunfire battles between Russian Federation soldiers in Crimea and that of the Ukrainians uh, going down to the border there. But again, tomorrow we will actually bring to you, we're going to bring to you some very interesting documentation. You might want to check out uh, John B. Wells' Caravan to Midnight. Yesterday, we were on there, uh, I think on Central Time, is 10 p.m. Central Time. Check it out in his archives there on Caravan to Midnight. Uh, John B. Wells had us on his program there. We went in depth as well. Brand new program on Hebrew Nation Radio called Epicenter. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to air, but we aired there with uh, Sister Bonnie. And that was a very enlightening show there, bringing out the evidence. What we're going to share with you, in fact, tomorrow night here, historically, looking how Russia has evolved, how a lot of people, as they look at them as this evil and wicked empire, as a Soviet Union, the, the communistic empire. Well, Russia actually at one time would be similar to that of America, a Christian nation under the Tsars or the Caesars of their day. Although, understand, I do not agree with Russian Orthodox, and I do agree with the Roman Catholic systems. I don't say that they don't both have some truth in what they believe, because they both believe that Jesus Christ to be the Messiah. I can agree with them on that on both sides. But it's not that I side with one faith or the other, but it was very much like a Christian nation. Russia became a communistic, atheistic nation after Vladimir Lenin, the very first Jesuit trained inside of, um, uh, that was over in, uh, my brain is kind of blank on these things, been, I've been feeling too well here lately, but um, uh, he was trained down in Geneva, Switzerland by Jesuits there. Uh, he was also funded uh, by the Federal Reserve 
to overthrow the Russian government there. They overthrew the czars. They came in and they set up the atheistic empire. Even uh, also Stalin was another Jesuit trained um, uh, Soviet person there. And what was really interesting, they made a major war against the Eastern Orthodox religion. We'll get into all that tomorrow. But uh, there was one religion that flourished, even though it was an atheistic country. Imagine that. They did switch it over to the Gregorian calendar. Hmm, that ought to be interesting to think about, yeah. Not to mention, only the Roman Catholic Church was the permitted religion in the entire country. The people that were Russian Orthodox or Eastern Orthodox were imprisoned and everything else you could imagine. So this Soviet atheistic communistic government was not inspired by the true Russia that was before that. This was where Jesuits had infiltrated the country, overthrew it, very similar to what they're trying to do in America today. Just remember, Bernie Sanders, the socialist that the Vatican so much love, socialism breeds only communism. And communism is something that the Vatican does. This is why we see a major shift in the churches of America joining back up with the Catholic Church. As long as you do that, you don't have to worry about your communistic regime. Otherwise, it'll become the state religion just like it was in Russia. So when people think that Vladimir Putin is only trying to bring back the Russian people to the former Soviet wicked empire, no, I think he's more like Alexander the Great that probably thinks he's similar to the king of the north in Daniel's prophecy to go defeat the king of the south. The only problem is there's a little mix-up in that. I think that that king of the north really is the Pope of Rome, and the king of the south may very well be Israel. We'll look into that more tomorrow night. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Be praying for Ukraine, for Crimea, the peoples there, so many people dying and in a place where it shouldn't be death at all. I'm Stephen Benoit with Israeli News Live. Shalom.